guys. So as promised, welcome to my first ever Photoshop tutorial. Um, I'm really excited to get started. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, and today we're gonna to be focusing on composites. And one of the things we're gonna focus mainly on is blending options. I was speaking to somebody recently um, about the blending options tool that you can use for your layers and they've never heard of it before, which was astounding because it's a really useful tool for composites and making them look more natural and blending your subjects with the environment or whatever it is that you're putting together. So let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you exactly how to use those techniques. Okay, so as you can see, I've got these two images here. Um, both of them are stock images that I found online. And just to make this whole process a bit easier, I have found images that kind of match each other um, in terms of color and lighting. Um, so it's gonna make this composite a little bit easier. So you can see this background that I've got here, which is very nice. It's got a really nice color grading to it already. So I really like this image. And then we've just got this image here of this girl walking across a beach and we just wanna cut her out and then put her into this photo here and just make it blend and look all natural. So the first thing that I'm gonna do um, is I'm just gonna drag this image over to the background um, and let's just scale that down a bit too. Firstly, we just need to mask out this subject, but I'm just gonna use the object selection tool and I'm just gonna draw around her like this. And Photoshop normally does a pretty good job of selecting it, there you go. Um, not bad, not bad at all. Um, so we just click this button down here to create a mask. As you can see, it's not perfect. So what I'm gonna do in a moment is I'm gonna quickly go in and just refine this mask. You can see we still got kind of the white from the background um, sort of running through her hair. And just overall, the, the mask itself is very rough and the edges are very, very sharp and we want it to be a lot softer. You can see these footsteps that have been left in the sand. So I'm just gonna make it look like she's basically walking along the beach and she's left those footprints. So something like there, which will be a bit smaller. There we go, something, something around that maybe. One of the first things I want to mention is when you're compositing, there's three things that you need to be aware of um, and three things that need to look natural in the image. Firstly is lighting. So in this image, you can see that the sun is setting on the left here onto the beach. As I said with the other image before, the light is falling on the subjects on the left-hand side and through the left side of her dress. And it's the same on this beach too. So they already match in terms of lighting. That's why I chose these two images together, just to make it a bit easier. So the other thing that we have to think about is color and making sure the colors match between the two as well. The colors are already quite similar in this too. So, I mean, the oranges in the subject are a little bit more yellow than they are in the background. So the background's got more of a sort of red hue to it. So we will need to color correct it slightly just to make her match. And the last thing to think about is perspective. This doesn't really matter too much for this tutorial, but you would also normally think about seeing if they kind of fit with the whole perspective of the image, but we don't really have to worry about that today. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna refine this mask because it is just very rough. So I'm just gonna get the brush tool and I'm just gonna go in and just paint around this mask. So I'm just gonna speed through this process quite quickly. We'll come out with a nice smooth mask. And just going around and just making sure all of the edges look really soft. She's not going to be very big in the frame, so the mask isn't going to be hugely important. Okay, so in terms of actually painting the mask with the brush, um, I think I'm done. It's still not perfect, but just for this tutorial, I'm just going to move a little bit quicker. One thing I might just quickly do is just go to select and then go select a mask. And I'm just going to hold shift and then clip down and select the mask. And that brings up the Refine Mask tool, which you used to get with some of the earlier versions of Photoshop. I prefer this to select a mask. I just think it's a little bit more um, basic and just easier to use sometimes. So I'm just gonna increase the smoothing to around 15, put the feather to about, let's say 1.2, and then shift the edge, maybe minus 10. And then it's just smoothed everything out a tiny little bit more for me. So that's what we're gonna be working with. I might just resize her again just to make her a bit smaller so she fits in with the scenery. Maybe about there. Cool. So now we're gonna move on to blending our subject with the background in terms of color. There's various different techniques that we can use to do this. The one that I'm gonna use now is just a simple curves layer. So bring up a curves adjustment layer and just clip it to the subject. Actually, let's just rename this subject so we can see what we're doing. So basically what we wanna do is just color correct this for the background. Um, and the easiest way to do this with curves is if you were to see these eyedropper tools on the left-hand side. 
So this one at the top is for the shadows, this one's for the midtones, and this one is for the highlights. Um, and what we can do is if we double click into the shadows one, um, and make sure that you've got the curves layer selected and not the mask, because otherwise it will just do some stuff in black and white, which is not what you want. And then we can click onto the darker areas of the background. So I'm gonna click maybe around here in the dark part of the sand, and it gives us this sort of dark um, purpley color. Click OK. Set no as the new target color for defaults. Um, we don't want to save it as a default. And then if we zoom in, and we just want to click the darkest part of the subject. So you can always click a few times and just see um, what works best. Something around there is probably fine. And then we'll do the same thing for the highlights. So just double click on the eyedropper tool here for the highlights and it'll bring up the box again. And this time we want to select a color near the sky. And this is where it says whitest, but I don't really want a white, I want more of a color. So something around here, which has got this kind of peachy tone to it and click no again. This time you want to select one of the highlights um, within the subject on the brightest part. So maybe in the dress here. And it's just made a very, very subtle change, but it does have a big impact. So we've done the highlights, we've done the shadows. The last thing we want to do is just the midtones. This can be a little difficult to find sometimes, um, but if you click onto the midtone eyedropper tool here to bring up that box again, um, and you kind of want to find anything in the image, in this particular case in the background, that is going to be close to gray, um, which is the 50% gray scale. In this image, it will be probably these trees in the background would probably have been gray because they kind of faded out a bit. And it gives you kind of this light sort of orangey brown color, which is kind of close to the gray. And now we want to find the midtone on the subject and then just kind of click in there to match it as well. So I think maybe on the neck. And again, this is very trial and error, so it's worth just kind of clicking around until you find something that fits. There we go, that looks pretty good. Let's just toggle that on and off. Yeah, that looks great. Uh, and then just the last thing that I've noticed is the, the blacks and the shadows in this are very, very contrasty um, and they're not so much in the background. So I'm just gonna go to the curves layer here. I'm just gonna click this node at the bottom, which is where the shadows are. And I'm just gonna lift it just a tiny bit. And that just fades those blacks slightly and then just makes it look a little bit more natural with the background. So this is a very quick composite. It's just to kind of show you the basic stuff that you can do to make two images blend together nicely. And now we're gonna go into the blending options. What we wanna do is we wanna click onto the subject layer and right click. And right here at the top, you've got this option that says blending options. So we'll click onto that. What we're gonna be looking at, and this is what somebody had asked me about specifically, is bevel and emboss. So bevel and emboss creates a highlight and a shadow on the subject that you're compositing. And you can move that highlight and that shadow around to match the direction of the light. So as you can see, we've got all of these sliders and stuff in this box. The best way to think about it is this. These two colors here are the colors that are gonna be put onto the subject in terms of the highlight and the shadow. So I wanna pick a highlight that's already in this image so it matches the background. So I'm gonna double click in here to bring up the color picker. I'm not gonna go for the white, I'm gonna go for the sort of light yellowy peach color that was around here, about there. Click OK. So firstly, you've got this um, this sort of circle here, and that is controlling the direction that the highlight and the shadow is going in. Um, you can move this little dot around, um, and you, as you can see, it affects this square over here as well. This square will show you um, where the highlight's gonna fall and where the shadow's gonna fall. If you imagine that this little dot in the circle here, where it says um, shading, that little dot is gonna basically control where the light is going. So the light is going from this direction down that way. Um, and it's the same on the subjects as well. You can see that the light is kind of heading um, this way uh, through her hair and then across the top of her head. We want our bevel and emboss to basically accentuate that. So let's go back in, let's click on subject, go to blending options and then click on bevel and emboss. So this little dot here, we want it to be facing the direction that arrow was going and it's gonna be where the arrow head was basically. So it's gonna be going down this way. We can control how much of this light we actually want to have on the edge of the subject. So um, we've got these sliders up here that say depth, size, and soften. So we're gonna work with those. I would recommend we starting off with the depth and we just kind of increase that to see how much light we kind of want to pull. That's a bit too much. We can then change the size a bit. And then I might just change this color to a warmer color. Um, maybe let's just try something like this and then increase the saturation a bit and the brightness. Wonderful. And I might just leave the shadow as it is. I mean, it does add a little bit more dimension. So maybe I'll just leave it up a little bit. 
but I don't really use it that much. I'm more using it for the highlights. It's very, very subtle. When you're kind of matching two completely different types of light, if you're matching like a sunset and a bright day, this tool can be really useful because it pumps in that little bit of color on the edge of the subject just to make it look like they've got that light reflecting onto them. Um, so it is quite a useful tool. It's just very, very subtle, but subtlety is great. Subtlety is what makes your images look fantastic. And the more subtle techniques that you learn, the more professional they're going to look. The one other thing that I'm going to talk about in these blending options is one other one that I like to use quite frequently as well, which is satin. So I'm just going to click on this one, which says satin here. And then all this does, it's very simple, is it just kind of fills the middle of the frame or the middle of the subject with kind of like a, a shadow, basically. Um, and it just fills it with black. And if you kind of want to make them a little bit darker and sort of blend them in a bit, then that can also help. So you've got this global angle here where you can change the direction that the satin is going into. We'll leave that the direction the light is going in and you can change the distance and size, but I was pretty happy with how that looks. If we just take a look without the blending options, it looks pretty good. Colors match. There's a nice mask on it and everything like that. But with this, that just gives it a little bit of depth there. And then the satin just makes her sort of go a little bit darker, which is kind of what I wanted to achieve. So I'm going to click OK with this. And that's it. That is the really subtle techniques to use for blending options just to help blend your subjects into the background in a composite. There is so much stuff that you can do with those blending options. It's worth just having a play around when you're doing composites and just see which different types of blending options you can use for different effects. In terms of finishing off this composite, there's probably not a huge amount that I would do. It does look pretty good already. But one thing that we can do just to make it look a little bit more cool is we can just add a new layer and add a drop shadow in. Um, so grab the brush tool, set the opacity to around 7% and make sure it's nice and soft. Turn this layer to soft light as well. And we'll just paint in a shadow. Very simple. And then let's just crop this image just to bring her into the center a bit, maybe around there. It's not the kind of thing I'd normally do. I don't usually find stock images. I edit a lot of my own photos, but this just shows you what you can do with those blending options. So let's just go through a quick recap of what we've done in this composite so you can get those techniques nailed down. So we first brought our subjects into the environment and then made sure that they matched in terms of size with the transform tool. And then we also masked the subject out to make sure that they were nice and smooth. We did this with the brush tool and then select a mask or the refine mask tool just to make everything a bit smoother. We then brought in a curves adjustment layer and clipped it to the subject and we just adjusted this in terms of luminosity and color so that the subject matched the background. We then went into the blending options by selecting the subject layer and right clicking and going to blending options at the top, which brought up our dialog box. And then we used bevel and emboss and we used satin to create this blended effect with the light and the shadows on the subject. And then we added a new layer, set it to soft light and with a black brush, we went in and just brushed in a very light drop shadow just to mix the lighting there as well. And that's it, we're done. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it and I hope that you find those tips really useful and you can take them away and put them in your own composites. If there are any questions that you have, then feel free to leave a comment below. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram already, give me a follow and give this video a like as well. I'm always happy to put out more Photoshop and more photography tutorials. If there's anything that you want to know, then I'll be happy to answer any questions. In the meantime, stay safe in these very difficult times and I'll see all of you very soon.